Hello, comic fans. Here's Earl Grey. In the 70s and the 80s, and you can argue maybe even in the 90s, female characters were severely underrepresented in European comics. For the most part, you got these um, square-jawed, broad-chested male heroes, and even if you want to try to uh, find um, female characters, let's say in Tintin, well, good luck. This do doesn't make uh, Tintin uh, a bad comic by no means, but yeah, just play this game, you will be surprised. Um, there were just some uh, exceptions to the rule. Uh, one was uh, Yokozuno, a pretty nice looking uh, sci-fi series, clearly aimed at kids. Uh, male and females look a bit like dolls with their big heads, but the tech stuff here is very nicely and very uh, uh, precisely drawn, and so I really can recommend the series. Um, these nice hard covers here, at least in Germany, are out of stock for a while now, but um, yeah, you can still try to hunt them down, like these uh, collected editions of Sophie by Jedeham. Much later on there uh, was Eric Heubel's Janu January Jones, um, but very fine comic. Uh, did a video about it, um, highly recommended. But in the 70s, there was really not that much um, until uh, Francois Walteri created Natasha. Later on, he uh, created Rubin or Rubine, however you want to pronounce her. So uh, this video will be dedicated to these ladies here. Both look a bit similar, almost like sisters. Uh, which is just due to the way uh, Valtteri draws his females um, and he likes to draw beautiful women. But don't get me wrong, uh, Natasha was a character created for the kids magazine um, for the age of from 6 to 66, <laughs> as I, when I recall it uh, correctly, um, Spirou. And um, doesn't change a thing that uh, she looks good. <laughs> and here uh, she uh, is the way she was created from different body parts, from different models. A proper model. Here's one of his friends, Francois Walteri's friends, who uh, posed for Natasha right there. And here we have her reading Spirou. And amongst uh, a gang of female characters from the Spirou verse and yeah, some other comics, I guess. Don't know if they really published Popeye. Um, but there's the aforementioned Sophie and Lady Mazupilami. Yeah, and of course, the male fantasy uh, had always, uh, or was always intrigued uh, by that character. So, but that was a particular drawing that wasn't published in Spiru, I'm uh, pretty sure. Here we have her uh, first story, um, Air Stewardess, uh, it's called in, in German, Natasha and the Headhunters. And you can uh, see that this style here is uh, pretty different from late, uh, the, her depictions later on, but we have uh, her companion slash friend Walter, maybe a stand-in for uh, his creator, Walteri, um, who always serves a bit uh, for slapstick. He's a fr uh, friend of jazz and comics and uh, so he's a stand in for us readers as well, I feel. There's so much stuff going on in uh, each and every album, on e almost each and every panel there, um, that some overview like I do right now here is almost impossible, but I guess you will get the gist of the storytelling features of just the, the sheer fun it is uh, to read a comic with Natasha.
and I guess that's all what this video here uh, will be about to give you some kind of clue what uh, you can expect from these comics here. <laughs> and he always had a bit of fun um, poking at his uh, colleagues um, at the drawing table. For instance, this killer, this hitman here, uh, is nobody else but Maurice Tillieu, his friend and colleague. <laughs> you can clearly uh, recognize Maurice Tillieu here, uh, and he's the reason for a lot of turmoil and action right there. These albums uh, could take a year to be finished uh, with the watery. Uh, they took very often much more than just one year. Um, he was always a bit late, but um, rewarded this with amazing panels, with amazing sequences, uh, full to the brim of really fun and action. And um, as you can see here. So this was the first, or is the first collected edition. Here are just uh, two little things that are for the Natasha completionist, or maybe uh, when you're uh, into goofy stuff uh, like me. Um, for some years, uh, some publishers try to publish their uh, comics in this size here as well. This is the very first. Um, comic that I've shown you um, with rearranged panels and the panels are sometimes cut off at their edges and, and uh, shrunken down and all these brutal uh, stuff here. You can get a lot of stuff out of it uh, and even how to uh, convey an airplane crash on just these uh, small size. And Natasha always looks good, even if she's falling out of a exploding or crashing plane. Yeah. Uh, this one is a, another one of the series I got. I got a lot of uh, these here in the meantime, even for uh, stuff like Storm, and which is incredible, and it's absolutely not suited for this format. But now continue with Natasha in the proper album format uh, in these collected editions. I mean, I can give you an overview about the covers from these very well-made uh, books here by Salek Publications, not so big publisher here. Um, this is Flight into Adventure and the third one is Journeys Through Time. Journeys into the Hell, or Journeys into Hell, Voyages into Hell, The Blonde Angel, and the, for now, uh, last one, uh, The Black Widow. I think there's a uh, one in the making, because Walteri is still doing uh, the Natasha comics, I believe. Uh, at least there are some French uh, albums um, that aren't collected in these six hardcovers. So, uh, now to this one, um, with her and her friend Walter uh, in the holidays, and of course, in the still in the 70s, uh, you have these, uh, these comics that feed um, the Sehnsucht for foreign countries uh, that you like to travel and see different uh, countries, exotic, uh, exotic places. Um, and uh, this comic here feeded these, um, yeah, these needs. And the third one is called Journeys Through Time. And here we have really a bit of time travel stuff, sci-fi stuff going on. Um, for an instance, we come to learn 
the grandparents of Natasha and Walter and uh, they knew each other um, because of this adventure with the Mona Lisa, the painting. And Walter turns out to be quite an ignorant fool, never have heard of um, uh, this grandfather, Walter, <laughs> of um, Mona, the Mona Lisa and um, gave uh, Walter the um, opportunity to draw all these old planes and old fashioned stuff and quite an amusing adventure here and well they they look <laughs> exactly as our heroes here and that's sort of the the joke in or the the idea behind the story here and uh, this is the very first sto story um uh, Natasha and the Mona Lisa the second part of this album here uh, consists of uh, them having uh, to take a flight together with all these <laughs> cartoonist virus. This one you have uh, seen already, but the whole gang of uh, cartoonists uh, takes a trip here. Yeah, there you have Victor Hubinon, the creator of Buck Danny, and uh, there's André Franquin, right there on the left. And guess who always comes too late? <laughs> Valtteri himself, making fun of himself, uh, always being the latest with his drawings. But here you have really the gang of Spirou together who drew for the publisher Dupuis. Uh, for an instance, here you have Will, uh, this guy, and again André Franquin. And as you can imagine, they have a lot of fun uh, during their flight there. Um, in terms of cartooning, uh, his colleagues here, uh, you can have a guess who this guy is. <laughs> Very uh, on point, I, I think. Uh, this is Sergio Aragones uh, in another uh, adventure right there. These pages here I've marked um, to showcase the fascination of uh, European cartoonists for yeah, American action movies. Uh, this could easily uh, has served as a pitch or a script for an American, very highly detailed script for an uh, American action movie. I mean, look how this truck here crashes right through the wall there. And the gates uh, this truck just has crashed through belong to the Alfred E. Neumann Institu uh, Institute, another pretty hilarious um, reference to Matt. And by the way, here you can see this little girl there, Sophie, from these other comics. So there's always a uh, nice detail some hidden somewhere on these pages here. Uh, it's, these comics are really a joy to reread and reread again and uh, look at each and every panel and enjoy all these details and um, yeah really fine comics absolutely this is volume four of these collected editions journeys through hell uh, now they're really stranded on some island there with the immensely bearded Walter and a pretty Good looking Natasha and they're really playing it sexy for this kids magazine, I have to say. Um, Spirou's covers didn't pull no punches, I mean, for a magazine that was aimed at uh, children and younger teenagers and, yeah, let's face it, adults uh, of all ages as well up to now because these um, comics are timeless and sort of ageless uh, for me. I mean, I put markers in these books here, but actually you could uh, watch or look at each and every page and have uh, lots of enjoyment uh, out of it. Um, the backgrounds weren't always drawn by Walteri himself. Uh, he had help, obviously, uh, in this book here. The backgrounds, for the most part, were drawn by Lodek and one other favorite of mine, uh, Will. 
And um, stories were written by different uh, colleagues here in this uh, particular volume. Uh, these were Mitte, Bastelin and Corin. But he changed his writers to keep the series fresh, at least with Natasha. Um, Rub with Rubin, it will be a, a different sto um, story. But I guess uh, this plane here, for instance, and the crash here wasn't drawn by um, uh, Walteri himself. But, uh, however, this, uh, this was produced here, this was made, it works perfectly and seamlessly and uh, clearly as a unit of action and yeah, Groucho Marxish <laughs> adventure, how this little guy here who likes to burn, burn stuff comes onto one plane after each other and uh, just burns, uh, burns it. This is uh, eventually the reason why our uh, two heroes here are stranded on that island. And you could say, okay, there maybe are worse uh, things than being stranded on an island <laughs> with uh, Natasha. But yeah, there were limitations to what you can do in this kind of comic. So yeah, they they um, they keep it friendly. And now to volume five, um, the Blonde Angel. Um, here you have the drawing, in pencil, the, the pencil drawing for that cover, in the inked version. I mean, I can't show you uh, the whole bonus section here, but in each book, uh, it's a rich assortment of highly enjoyable stuff drawn by Waltery and background information and ripoffs and here. <laughs> I guess it's... Uh, yeah, this was drawn by Tibet, the creator of Ricochet, aka Rick Master, and a very nice caricature of his colleague here. And we have here Marilyn Monroe, a ripoff uh, for Natasha. This was a special issue called Nostalgia. I still don't have this one, damn it. And another classic scene that can't. Um, that can't be missed in, in any comic or movie about airplanes uh, with a certain amount of action and, air and a budget, of course. But uh, you always have the budget for these kind of scenes when you're drawing comics. Uh, this airplane crashing into the airport, this is just fascinating stuff. Uh, and another one of these backgrounds and uh, highly detailed sceneries uh, where... Um, Walteri got help, I guess. Uh, in this particular volume, which was uh, our album, um, it was Mite who uh, wrote actually the story as well. And here's the next story. Um, again, the backgrounds are by Mite, and the story was written by Pio, uh, the creator of the Smurfs, which I find pretty interesting. But uh, they were really a close bunch of friends uh, who happened to have the same profession. Look at this first panel here. I mean, you can imagine this kind of picture as a poster, but even when you continue with these smaller panels, and you really can lose yourself in each and every panel right there. Um, you really have the the feeling for a, a brimming city, brimming with life. And we have even our crazy scientist over there, even though he's a pretty friendly one. And again, some cameos of um, famous people. And a reference to that Hitchcock movie, um, was it The Man Who Knew Too Much? Um, here, Natasha falls from that train and you can only see the hands there of the guy who did it. 
and further examples uh, how fully detailed these panels are. I mean, there's a reason why um, many comics uh, take place in the desert or in the polar regions, uh, in regions where you don't have to uh, draw too much into the background and everyone is still satisfied. Uh, it's not so easy with uh, city sceneries here. Um, lots of stuff to draw, but I got the impression that uh, Valtteri always have liked uh, to draw this kind of stuff here. Makes me really want to reread all these comics all over again. Volume 6, The Black Widow, collects these four albums right there. And we get again a big bonus section with similarized um, original pages. Like this one here. And as you can see, this page is from 1999, so right there the series lasted already almost three decades. So it was a really big su success and uh, still is up to this day. Uh, the cover drawing for the 20th album. The watery in action there. Here's the creator with his uh, most important uh, character. A quite beautiful pencil drawing. And here's album 20, Atoll 66, uh, the last um, album, at least in this collected edition here. Um, it was once published not by Dupuis, but by Mazu Productions, which is interesting, in 2007. Um, this one here is um, after a story by Guy D'Arte or somehow. And uh, the backgrounds here were delivered by one Bruno Di Sano, uh, which is pretty interesting because he later on will do a lot of these Rubin stories, which will I talk about in a second. But um, let's enjoy these drawings here for what they are. Just fantastic stuff and last glimpses for me at least into the Natasha verse. Oh. Can't, can't go before I show you these dudes here. Uh, I think you have recognized him and him. Um, they call each other, other Keith and Ron. So if you're maybe one of these younger kids who don't know their rock and roll anymore. Um, yeah. But now we have to say goodbye to Natasha, at least for now. I really hope for the next collected edition of these. Um, and hello, Rubin. Now with Rubin, we leave a bit the adventure territory uh, of Natasha, because in Natasha almost nobody ever uh, has died. While in Rubine, this is pretty much very often the case. She is, our protagonist here, uh, is a hard-boiled detective who usually shoots first and asks uh, questions later. And if she doesn't kill that bad guy, then at least she shoots him into the knee. Um, so, um, the stories here were, were written by Mythic, one guy, Mythic. At least, again, you see uh, Watery's fable for uh, these kind of ladies. Um, but I wanted to show you the writer, who is very important for these stories. And 
Well, this series alone, he made me one of my favorites in terms of uh, European comic writers. Here we have the gang. Uh, Mythic, Thierry Martin, who was the editor uh, back then, and uh, Francois Watery in the middle. Um, but drawn for the most part uh, was um, Rubin in the beginning by this guy here, Dragan de Lazare. Uh, Waltery had his hands full with the Natasha stories. Uh, so he only uh, commented on the drawing of uh, Lazare. And even though Rubin is much more hardboiled than Natasha ever was, uh, it was still uh, published at least at first in this Hello BD magazine aimed at people from the ages of 7 to up to 77. But I really would doubt uh, if the kids, if you're 7, if you really could grasp these stories here uh, about adultery, about uh, yeah, sometimes even rape and um, brutal murders. Um, when you're seven, or if this really makes is good for you. I mean, uh, a lady uh, that is always disturbed when she's showering, then a crime happens. And this is some kind of running gag throughout. This is, I mean, the, the least of my concerns. But some of the stuff here is really uh, Brutal. Not only not not really shown in in lots of gore or something. We have still this cartoony style. Uh, Dragon de Lazar really um, managed to to uh, um, adapt or mimic Walter's style uh, in his very own way very well and improved on that department. I, still in where the first stories I would have preferred Walter's uh, more detailed uh, art. Um, but yeah, he grew on me. Uh, Lazar's art grew, really grew on me. So um, these stories here in Rubina really are uh, exciting, have really exciting plots. Um, surprising terms and are believable. These terms, uh, the, these turns in the story and the, the, these twists are well prepared. Uh, they don't come from nowhere. And when you uh, turn back the pages, you can really see what you have, at least I, uh, have overlooked for the most part. There, were, there are hints. So when you really look at them, you can see... Um, how these stories unfold. There's a certain logic to them and which is very, which for me um, yeah, um, discerns the good crime comics from the not so good crime comics. By the way, here's a <laughs> very fun self-portrait of Dragan de Lazar. He uh, drew himself into the story here as this <laughs> nerdish uh, photographer who has a certain subject that he likes to the most even though he uh, states, oh, I'm just an advertisement uh, for mattresses, for beds. And she says, oh, there are, if you had put all these ladies onto these beds, uh, there would be not much to see from the beds. However, um, nice humor in all of these stories, despite of all the grim and gritty stuff that really is shown uh, in these stories, and they really improve uh, with uh, the second volume. The second collected edition called Killer Jagd, Hunt for the Killer, is actually my favorite of the bunch here with the uh, Rubine comics. Uh, it has this very uh, nice cover here, but the three stories here inside are really this kind of page turner that you can't put down before you are uh, through until the end. Uh, this is, of course, due, um, highly due to the fantastic stories by Mythic. Um, great storyteller. Uh, maybe looks like a bit too much words uh, here for you, but it isn't. Uh, everything is 
right there where it belongs and it's a jigsaw puzzle of, uh, very often uh, but yeah as i said with surprises with lots of humor and uh, interesting and believable characters yeah just fun stuff totally fun stuff um highly recommended um the uh, artist um, um, Lazar later on became yeah, sort of involved in the Yugoslavian war. At least he moved back to Serbia at the time. And um, this made uh, the cooperation between Mythic, uh, Valtteri and Lazar uh, increasingly um, complicated. So that unfortunately in the run of that next volume here, which is for the first half, highly recommended as well. Uh, but it became uh, increasingly complicated and later on, look at these characters here. They're drawn like Mor uh, Morris, uh, Lucky Luke did, uh, Lucky Luke's cartoonist did in his best years. You never know, maybe <laughs> uh, Morris even drew the stuff here. Uh, it's possible since this gang of uh, befriended cartoonists um, drew some, some stuff in the background here and there. Um, but I would rather think of this as an indication for the um, improvement of uh, Lazar. Right there you see this black masked terrorist there, right there. And Rubin is actually in her holidays, uh, hence she uh, dresses, uh, has this red dress there. She's uh, from the southern states and always has to hide uh, for her mom that she is uh, in the police and for some reasons. However, here you can see how she manages to snap, uh, snatch the, the bomb from that guy and throw it into the pond. Yeah, nice Marilyn Monroe vibes as well, right there. Um, lost a bit my train of thoughts. But that's uh, the benefit of showcasing these beautiful pictures, even if you just have lost your train of thoughts, you can hide it in showcasing these beautiful drawings. By the way, um, <laughs> the proportions between legs and the rest of her body are sometimes really out of whack but that's how we men function folks um ah oh, this this is a fantastic story here um starting with an adultery and uh very interesting characterization of uh, different women uh, there and in the snow and every I like everything about this story here um, and sadly after that uh, we have one Boyan taking over after the cooperation with Lazar uh, couldn't be continued and yeah I don't say too much uh, if just look at the pictures. The stories are all right. Uh, they are continue to be all right. But it's really a step back in terms of the art. Boyan couldn't really deliver this kind of magic that uh, Lazar and Walteri uh, achieved before. So it was a good thing that they changed to the uh, Mr. Disano, uh, which you, Bruno Disano, Bruno Disano, I guess, yeah, Bruno Disano, um, who was a professional cartoonist, and you get uh, a very professional vibe here, uh, right there. That's Bruno Disano, together with Walteri, and in this last, unfortunately, last uh, collected edition, the last. Well, the last uh, albums and in the beginning it's almost too cute and too 
slick to polished. Um, especially with these uh, coloring here that is not overdone by any means, but has is obviously done by the computer. Um, This was a two-part uh, series, uh, ran um, uh, over two albums, so it has um, around 90 pages, which the story needed, because this was really a complicated, or it is a complicated uh, story with a very evil bad guy. That's no spoiler, you will see this right from his ver very first appearing in the story. Look at the coloring here for different different uh, times of the day. This is done pretty masterfully. But here you have a good example how you can combine this cartoony style with pretty exciting uh, action-packed and uh, quite frankly a bit cheesecakey-ish uh, sexy uh, stuff here. Here we have the two hitmen here. They have to finish off our lead protagonist right there, but they take their time. They want to enjoy what they see right there. Cuckoo, uh, cuckoo. <laughs> and uh, they introduce uh, themselves because they are pretty sure of themselves that uh, they can kill her after they have interrogated or tortured her, uh, but not with her because she, even in the bathtub, she uh, is prepared. And so, as I said it, Rubin is really a character that shoots, yeah, in this uh, case, she even took her time with these dudes. So that was my not so uh, short overview about these um, books here. A last remark to other comics by Watery that made him famous quite uh, over here. There are some uh, cartoony, sexy comics uh, really aimed at adults with the characters getting naked all the time with some mild humor. Um, it's not really my cup of tea, but since I really do like Waltery and I do like uh, these drawings, of course, maybe I get some of these collected editions there. Some. Um, they will publish some of these in the near future. And uh, there are lots and lots of other cartoonists who uh, adapted Waltery style. There's almost some kind of Waltery style of depicting females uh, that has been used again and again for these kind of sexy, mildly erotic um, cartoons. So, uh, but this was my overview about these fantastic, amazing Natasha and Rubina comics. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.